Hello and welcome back to the Mystical Painters Painting Series with Studio Tamra. Today is an exciting day because it is a full moon. Not just a full moon, but the pink full moon. The pink full moon is actually a super moon according to <clears throat> the Farmer's Almanac. And it's the closest moon of the year. That's why it's called the super moon. It ap appears a moss pink color, which is... <clears throat> was named by the Native American Indians because the wild ground phlox um, is the first flower of spring and it has that same color. So it's a rainy day today, but on the super moon, I decided I am going to do a bunny painting. This is Penelope. And I got her on Etsy from my friend Alexandra in Poland. Her shop name is Mini Art in the Home. She also did my Damon, and um, she does beautiful taxidermy artwork, and she runs a rabbit rescue. And the rabbits that don't make it, she makes into beautiful sculptures and then sells them and uses the proceeds to rescue more rabbits. She has hundreds of rabbits, so it's an excellent cause. None of these animals are harmed or killed for taxidermy, and um, this is Penelope. She's just precious. There's Ra Doberman. Hi, Ra. Um, I thought it would be great to paint her for spring, you know, for those of you that celebrate Easter's coming up, and oh, so it'd be a great time of year to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and get everything set up here, and you can follow along at home with me if you want to. So I'm going to try to adjust this. I'm getting my, my good stand is coming in any day now, so that'll be awesome. Okay, so... First of all, I don't think I'm going to need these because it's a rainy day. Okay. Oh, and you've noticed this is not a costume. These are actually um, Cimarudas that are from Italy. And the Cimaruda was a symbol back in the day that you were a follower of the old ways or you were a healer. And I wear this one every day. I also have one tattooed on my back. Um, I found out after years of knowing that I had that bloodline, that I um, was Italian Sicilian bloodline on my mom's side. And um, I've spent a lot of years learning about herbs and healing and, and all of that. So it's fabulous and I love that stuff. So the Simaruda is, is not just an indicator that you're a healer, but also some people would hang them above the beds of infants to ward off evil eye. These are actually very, very old from the 1800s, the ones that I'm wearing. Um, I collect them. I, they're very hard to find, the authentic ones. So, okay. One more thing. Got to give a shout out today to all the postal workers, everybody out there at FedEx, UPS, the post office, um, making sure that we're getting our mail through this terrible coronavirus. Let me move my... Mastodon skull over here for now. And we're going to play with him later, too. We're going to paint him. Okay, so here's Penelope. I'm going to set her in the window right here where I can see her. And can you see her? No, you can't see her. What if we put her right here? Oh, can you see her there? Okay, perfect. All right. So here we go. Bunnies on the easel. Well, this is a first. How fun is this? Isn't this fun? This is exciting. Okay, so I'm going to put my odorless mineral spirits here. Materials you will need for this are some paint brushes, some paint, or you can draw if you'd prefer to draw. Um, that would be entirely up to you. And uh, I, know, I don't know that I need this large of a canvas to do this little bunny. Let me get a smaller canvas. Let's see what we got here. Um, here's one. This will be good. When I do outdoor plein air painting, I paint oftentimes on masonite board. I cut it the right size and I gesso it with professional gesso. And it's sturdier, easier to travel with than a canvas. It's also tinted, it's pre-tinted. So that's pretty nice. So we're going to lift the easel up. Whenever you're painting, you don't want to be slouched over and uncomfortable. You don't want to um, get 
your body contorted in positions where you're not comfortable because eventually the neurological pathways will form memory and you'll get aches and pains and you know a little bit of a crippled um, posture and, and you don't want that so okay so if we're gonna paint this little bunny step by step can you guys see me okay first thing we're gonna do little Penelope, my little friend. First thing we're going to do is we're just going to get some uh, with my rainbow of color. We're going to get some colors. I'm going to use a little bit of brown. And I use a lot of rags. If you have old towels, these are the best rags for painting. Okay, so Let's see, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of sketch it in. If your drawing skills aren't very good, I highly recommend practice drawing. You have to have good drawing skills. So we're gonna mix kind of a gray brown undercolor here. It's the first thing we're gonna do. And then we're just gonna look at the little bunny and we're just gonna kind of put the outline in. So. So there, there's a foot here, there's a foot here. It was kind of hard to see the bunny because, geez, he's, he's sitting kind of strange, isn't he? Um, I absolutely love her artwork, by the way. If you go to um, Mini Art in the Home, is her Etsy shop, and some of it is a little bit... Um, more on the, you know, creepy side. But I love the little sweet, innocent little bunnies and things, so. All right, so from the angle that I'm at, it looks like this and this. Okay, here's another really good thing to teach you guys. If you screw up with oil, this brush holder, by the way, is priceless. I absolutely love it, it's wonderful. If you screw up, you dip your brush in your odorless mineral spirit and you can just erase paint. Like I have the feeling this leg might be just a little too high. See, and you can just erase it. So <clears throat> oil paint is very forgiving. It's a wonderful medium to use for that reason. So anyway, um, I also have began wearing um, reading glasses. That's what happens when you get old. Um, <laughs> and uh, sometimes I wear them when I paint as well, so we'll see. But right now, I want you to just squint and kind of block in what you see, and that's really all you can ever do with a painting, is just block in what you see. Okay, so we'll get my little bit of gray color here. So we're going to put, his nose is here, there's your nose, and then it kind of goes up, there's his eye, there's his face, and his one ear. It's hard too because with taxidermied animals, you know, they don't have the light. Like when you're painting a real live animal and you can see the magic and the light in their eyes and uh, oh that's that's exciting and that's fun to paint and, you know but we'll we'll pretend Penelope's still alive. I have no idea why I call her Penelope. I just love that name and she looks like a little sweet little girl bunny who that's just how she looks. Like a little Penelope. So Starting to see it yet? Can you guys at home out there in YouTube land start to see the bunny coming? It's coming, it's coming slow, but it's coming. Okay, and then there's a darkness here. So I'm using 
um, a tinted masonite board with gesso, uh, Dick Flick gesso, and um, rolled on, and then the boards are cut. And what I'm using right now is um, burnt sienna and violet gray mixed together, and I add a little cobalt, and I add a little yellow ochre. So this is yellow ochre right here, cobalt, burnt sienna, and this is that violet gray that you can get from um, Terry's Artorama. Super, super nice color. I love it. So I'm going to just kind of put the bunny in a little more. I'm going to add a little more violet gray under here because that's kind of what I see right here. A little bit of violet gray. Later on, I think I'm probably going to put some pink, pink in here too. Um, see, I feel like I'm kind of drawing as I go. Um, sometimes it's easier just to draw the rabbit and then paint it. But I wanted to show you in this episode how you can use turpentine to erase things and how you can just draw and how forgiving oil is. So see, I'm starting to block the bunny in. Sweet little bunny. And, uh, okay. So on his back, and this is not um, a, a studio quality painting I would enter in a show or an art gallery or anything like that. This is just a, a quick little demo, step by step for all of you to see Penelope. And I've got a lot of really great artists out there that I know who um, some of them have even been in some of my classes up at Christine's Gallery in Nama, Michigan. We do an art camp up there in the summertime. We've done it for two years. This is the third year. And uh, Linda and Lily and Julie and Christine, they're all fabulous, fun, talented, amazing people. Um, and so if you're watching this, I'm shouting out to you guys too. Um, but so So for the bunny, this is kind of what I'm seeing. I'm still kind of just using the same brown color. And you notice the back foot here is white, a lot lighter. I know that's artificial, it's from this, but so what? We're gonna do it just because why not? So we're gonna have a fun little painting of Penelope. Oh, I'm so excited. I've been wanting to paint her ever since I got her. Had her for a couple of years. And Oh, I love to support people who are out there rescuing animals. And um, Alexandra, Mini Art in the Home on Etsy, she, I can't even imagine driving around and rescuing rabbits from places, pet rabbits that people decide they don't want, and taking them into your home and raising them and paying for everything. I mean, what a, what a beautiful person. And then, you know, finding a way to use the rabbits that don't make it for whatever reason and, and, and make sculptures out of them to sell to support your rescue. That, that's brilliant. She's, she's a lovely person. Um, I, I had a really cool sculpture of a, a Buddha, a bunny in a Buddha pose, kind of in a meditative pose. And, oh, I loved, I loved that. But, um, Unfortunately, the moths came in from outside in the summer. You gotta watch this if you have taxidermy mounts. You need to spray them with cedar because the moths will get in there and lay eggs in your mount and it'll screw it all up. So anyway, I'm squinting now. So if you, if you can't see something or something doesn't make sense to you, my advice would always be just squint a little bit and um, and it, and it will come, and it will make more sense to you. So, so we're working on our little springtime austera, uh, Easter, whatever you celebrate, bunny here. You know, speaking of celebrations, I decided a couple years ago, 
Here's the cloud dust, by the way. I decided a couple years ago, every day should be a celebration. So, um, you know, I had, oh gosh, what, what, what days did I decide? I should reinstate that. I had like, Tuesday was Taco Tuesday. Um, Wednesday, of course, we all know hump day is Wednesday, the middle of the week. Thursday was up years Thursday where I would send my friends a, a joke. Um, you know, flatter me Saturday, fun day Sunday. Make little themes because, you know, we look forward to in life vacations and celebrations. So why not make every day one? That's, that's fun. That's really fun. That's a great idea. That's what we should do. So what day is today? Oh, my gosh. It's the full moon. I think it's Wednesday. Hmm. I want you guys to comment what you think we should call today. And uh, maybe we'll name our days while we paint together here. That would be real fun. Okay, so little bunny foo-foo. Little bunny foo-foo hopping through the forest. Isn't he a pretty little bunny? She. He, she. You know, none of my videos are edited at all. And I have no no air touch up on my face or anything. I'm 48 years old and um, just, I look how I look. I'm not gonna get any younger just like the rest of us, but you know, isn't that a gift? Isn't it a gift to be here? I mean, why, why is age gotta be such a bad thing? Why do we have to always, you know, try to hide it and have surgery and get rid of wrinkles and be embarrassed by how we look? Why? You earned it. You've been here, you earned it. Not everyone was that lucky. I have people I was very close to that I've lost um, already in life, and some of them young, to various things. Um, but at any rate, celebrate your life. Celebrate every day. If something's really bothering you, it's time to start thinking about how to change it. How, how do you make it better? I do that often. I think about Man, it's tricky to paint the bunny and <laughs> talk to you guys. I'm sorry. I'm trying my best. Oh, the little bunny. Oh, sweetie. Okay. A little bit in here. And when you do fur, I do have fur brushes, but basically, you know, you squint. And where it's real dark, you put that in first. That goes underneath. And then on top is where it's lighter, obviously. Um, and you kind of layer it. And I do have some brushes. I showed some of my some of my students from Christine's gallery um, some of my fur brushes. I'll get those out and show them to you here in a minute. Just uh, I'm kind of at a tricky part where I gotta figure out where I want to put. I think his eye is there. So now I'm using a little Naples and white, and I'm putting in a little bit of the lighter area stuff. And I'm just guessing, and like I said, this is certainly not one of my gallery pieces or a show piece. It's just to kind of help. It's a teaching tool to just show you guys the process that I know my, my friend out there, Lenore McCarthy, she's been asking me when I'm going to start doing these and some other friends. So here we go. Here's our first step-by-step -step bunny. She cracks me up because, you know, I'm not just Studio Tamara. I'm also the mystical paintress, and I love all things creative and mystical. And I love it when people say, well, I don't recognize the full moon. You don't, because it's out there. It's, it's outside your window for everyone to see. It's been there since the dawn of time, longer than even human language or anything. So how do, you, how do you not recognize it? It's ridiculous. But anyway. Okay, so uh, I feel like I might be needing pretty soon here to get another brush. But as you can see right now, it's just starting to look like maybe a rabbit maybe just starting to but 
This is all underneath. When you paint, you've got to paint in layers. I usually go from darkest darks to lightest lights, and I also usually go from far away to close up, especially for landscapes. But this guy presents all kinds of different challenges because it's not a natural scene, it's not a photograph. He's sitting it on top of my easel here. Um, so there's all kinds of different um, challenges that I'm working with all at once. And I'm even using a little bit of arbitrary color because I'm kind of sick of just try to duplicate a photograph look. I mean, yes, that's great for technical practice and that's great if you can do that, if you've mastered that ability of, of those using those skills and being able to duplicate something you see that's excellent. Um, well, that, that's beautiful. But once you get there, and I'm not saying I've mastered anything, I'm in a process of learning my whole life, but once you get to where you can kind of do that, try something new. You know, challenge yourself, because if, if you just keep doing what you're really good at over and over and over and over again, you don't really grow, you just, you know, you're recognized for being really good at that, and that's more of an ego thing. And egos can, can be dangerous. Um, so, Stay humble, keep learning, try stuff you've never done. Don't be afraid to look silly. I'm sure I look silly quite often. <laughs> okay, so now I'm using a little bit of white on the bunny. And this is not a step, these videos aren't step by step, um, like in a class. If, if, if you come to a gallery or take one of my classes, I have boards and I'll have all the steps up on boards so that if you know you're behind you can go back a step or if you're ahead um, you can just continue to move forward and that's fine and I've got all those I'm not doing boards for every video because it already takes long enough to figure out what's gonna go in the video and <laughs> uh, what costume am I gonna wear and what's the subject and what do I talk about and all that stuff so um, I may do a few a few of the step-by-step -step with the boards for some of you. If, if I get requests, I'll do it. Um, I'm just super excited that you guys are all here. Okay, so now we're gonna, I'm gonna use, hmm, what kind of colors do we have? Can you see the progress so far? That's the bunny, the beginning of the bunny, the bunny. Um, so I think pretty much what we got here is this little fella's, I might change that background, oh, sorry folks. This is another cool thing about being an artist, you can take artist liberty and change things. If something bothers you, you change it, you don't have to duplicate things. So, so this is really bothering me. Um, this whole area down here because his legs up in the air and a real rabbit it wouldn't be so I'm gonna just take a little cobalt blue a little purple and I'm gonna make that a shadow instead of that and this is gonna be kind of an impressionistic bunny rabbit not a not necessarily a photographic bunny rabbit so his eye, okay, so this is all fluffy up on his head. It, painting, and you'll hear me say this over and over and over, it's a, it's a process of problem solving. You're just solving problems. Hmm, what is this right here? What's the shape of the forehead? What's the mathematical distance from here? What color goes here? What if I put this color here? And what if I do this? And what if I do that? And it's kind of endless and it's silent, usually. Usually it's silent. So when I'm up here painting, I can be up here for, I've been up here for 10 hours before and not even had music on or anything, just in silence painting and not even know what time it is or what day it is. Uh, okay, so, so now I'm trying to kind of sculpt in the bunny face. I think his eye, is like here. 
What do you think? Does that look like a good spot? Is that about right? So placement is important. This is why I have a lot of skulls um, that I get from various places because you need to know the anatomy unless you're doing something really um, modern or abstract and you don't care about the value, the perspective, the drawing, and all this, you know, getting everything right. Um, but <clears throat> skulls will help you study them, draw them. You can even just look at them and they help you learn so much about what's underneath. Um, I was in Dallas, Texas at a workshop with Kay Polk, who was one of the top portrait artists in the world. She did portraits for the president <clears throat> and the owners of all the pro sport teams. And I was at her house and I remember her and I were working on arbitrary color. Um, where you would do a portrait and you would put red in the face and green in the face and um, every now and then I think about that and I just want to add a little bit of arbitrary color to painting so you'll notice that every now and then I'll do a, a commission of a dog and there'll be a little blue like this right here or pink or something in there and um, I just I love that I love color color and brush stroke I I love to see all that. I think it's so important that we keep all of that stuff in art and not just duplicate what we see, duplicate what we see. Oh, that's so boring. Kind of is the rule with the plain air painting though. I mean, plain air painting, you kind of have to paint what you see. So his whole underbelly is going to be getting a little bit of this violet gray stuff. I might even add a little purple just to make it a little more darker because there's my bunny. Hi bunny. Bunny poo poo. And you notice I'm kind of trying to go over and not have a lot of Edges. I'm not a real big fan of edges. So this little pie, he isn't even sitting on anything in the, he's just floating in the air. So it's kind of hard to make up. You notice I'm using the same brush. I'm using the same brush for white, the same brush for blue, the same brush for dark, the same brush for all of it. Um, it's a la prima one session wet on wet painting is, is my favorite way to paint. So, um, Not everybody agrees with that, but I just need to put a little bit of a base underneath him here. So you guys are actually seeing the first time that I'm doing a painting start to finish for the video. Let me see, so put a couple, put a little bit of dark underneath here because he needs it. He needs better brushes. This brush is not the best. It's like a bunny in a nest. It's like a, it's like a bunny in a bird nest in the spring, during the pink moon. I'm gonna have to put some pink in here too, just to, just to honor the pink moon today. That's so fun. That's just so fun. Okay. Now, I'm gonna do something a lot of people don't do, and you don't have to do it in yours, it's up to you, but I'm going to let this, I'm gonna dip my brush in turp and let some of these just drip off because I'm experimenting with things. I'm, it's, it makes it a lot more fun when you do stuff like that, when you just, you know, take your rag, wipe it. And it just makes it more fun. Sometimes I actually leave the globs on there and I let them run down. But okay, so now I'm going to need a little bitty brush. I have this amazing uh, Art Deco vase from 
Harry Nelson, art teacher in the UP, good friend of mine. Phenomenal artist, musician, great guy. I fell in love with his vase and he gave it to me. So it's special. People people give me special items and and I use them and I keep them. Okay. So for the eye, normally, all right, I'm gonna show you a mall stick. This is a mall stick. A mall stick is used. Usually I'll hang it on top of a painting or I'll put it on that bar. But you use a mall stick when you are doing close-up paintings. So I'm gonna make up this eye. And I'm gonna don't ever use straight black. You can mix black with French ultramarine blue. And um and burnt umber. Don't use straight black. Very rarely do you ever need to use straight black for anything. Let's see. Okay. So you just gotta look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. Keep looking at it, look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. And that's the name of the game. Keep looking, keep looking, keep looking, kind of thing, you know? Okay. Put the ball stick away. Now, I'm going to see if I don't have some. Oh, I have old glasses. Oh, here's some. Oh yes, leopard print reading glasses. Makes life fun. Now I can really see. And I'm gonna finish this eye. Okay. And he has a little bit of light blue in there. So <clears throat> here's another cool tool, the eraser. You can use an eraser and it lifts paint up off the board. And that's fun, that's fun. Okay, like a little light blue. And your next step is very important that you need to do very slowly. Anytime you're painting eyes, eyes are the trickiest thing because they're shiny and they reflect things and they're very, very tricky to do. So this little bunny has beautiful, beautiful little aqua colored eyes I see in there. I'm going to try my best to duplicate them just how they are. Okay. And let's see, we've got to show you here. Pupil is always the darkest part 